morning, Complecto fam. It's day one in Geneva, and we are starting our week for Watches and Wonders at the home of Frederic Constant, Alpina, and Atelier de Monaco. We're gonna take you inside to the manufacturing. We're gonna show you how these incredible timepieces are designed and how they're brought to life by the incredible watchmakers. So lock in with us and enjoy the show. When I look at Frederic Constant as a brand, I never would have imagined that it's such a young brand. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to having that, that conversation. Yes. The first atelier is uh, the T0, that's where we do the machining, which means that's where we create the components that are going to be used later to assemble the caliber. The machine can use up to 97 tools, so it's very important to choose the right ones. Once uh, we have the components, they are right here at T1, which is where we create the heart of the watch. So that's where we assemble the caliber. As you can imagine, it's very uh, technical. It requires a lot of patience. Here you have some examples of the tools that they need to use, because you also have some examples of the components, but the components can be also smaller than that. Mm -hmm. So they obviously they always have tweezers, magnifying glass, etc. and it's where we do the encasing. So for, uh, for the encasing, what happens is that um, we add all the external parts of the caliber. So we add the dial, the hands, we add the sapphire glass, the case, the crown, all the external parts. And then at T3, we really do the quality control on the piece uh, that is ready. Then, if everything goes all right, we arrive to the last uh, workshop, which is called T4, and that's where we add the strap or the bracelet. Mm. And then, uh, otherwise, if there are issues, they come back again, and then they redo the quality control, and uh, hopefully they go to T4. Mm -hmm. This is really one of the most complex uh, complications that we have uh, in the watchmaking industry. And it's all done, obviously, uh, by hand. Tourbillons. So romantic. <laughs> based uh, in Bien, so here uh, mm. in Switzerland. So why it was called like this? Because the founder decided to start a collaboration with some other independent watchmakers. Obviously they all had in common the passion for watches, but they were also all alpinists. So that is why when they deposit the design, uh, the design has this triangle shape that uh, represents the mountains. Mm -hmm. This is, is a brand I've not had the pleasure of, of really seeing that often. Mm -hmm. it's, it's quite rare. Right? Yeah, even because in terms of boutique, yeah, I was it's say, very rare to, to find. You can find some boutiques in the Netherlands. Are there any points of sale in the US or it's just like... It's not a mass production, so right. it's really more on demand. What would you estimate the annual production for Atelier de Monaco? I would say 50 or something like that, 50. even less. Wow, very, that's even very, less. very small. I didn't come up with any assumptions. Mm -hmm. it, I think it looks, in many ways, it looked a lot like what I've, you know, I thought we might see in terms of like the laboratory set up mm -hmm. and the white coats and the watchmakers. But to be able to get both the kind of museum tour combined with this behind the scenes look at mm -hmm. you know how the watches get made, yeah. right, and, and being able to see the process uh, come to life helps to provide a very full picture. Mm -hmm. 